Customers are really interested in second screen. They're starting to see the value of it. They're starting to see that it's real and not something that's down the road. We are working with our partners, Evolution, and with the Second Screen Society, which is a group of all, pretty much all the major players in the TV and film and ancillary industries who have come together to promote Second Screen, to set standards for it, and we're going to have a small conference this afternoon that Kid is sponsoring, and some guy named Alan Wolk is doing the keynote for, and it's great. It's aimed at all the very sort of high-level people. We've got a great guest list there, and what we're talking about is ways, you know, how this all works. How do you monetize it? How do you get it happening? What's the technology? What are the standards behind it? Because it's coming in and networks have to, networks, network operators, broadcasters are all struggling to get on top of it because it's still an amorphous thing and nobody really knows what it's going to look like so it's just trying to stay ahead of the curve. The big opportunity we see in second screen is in advertising and in and that's a way to monetize it. So right now people are looking at doing simultaneous ads and things like that but we think the opportunity is much greater. We're the second screen experience where everybody is logged in individually you'll be able to get a whole lot more data about everybody. Right now we just rely on Nielsen and their diaries, whereas you'll be able to know exactly who is watching what, which can let you do far more targeted advertising, and also you can do the advertising that where the second screen experience is a much deeper dive. It's not just a banner that syncs up with a TV commercial. In our product, we have a product called the Social Program Guide, which if I toot my own horn, we just won the CSI, the Cable and Satellite, magazine's award for best social TV app of 2012, so we're pretty psyched about that. But in its latest iteration, we've created something we call the Ad Locker, where little icons from all of the advertising and all of the product placement that you've seen while you were watching TV that evening are all stored in this locker. So if you want, if you see something, you don't need to stop right then and there. You don't need to stop what you're doing, but you can go later and go into it and have an experience that feels much more like shopping, which is fun, as opposed to watching advertising, which isn't. Tell us a little bit more about where you guys stand that sweet spot of moving over the terrestrial broadcasters to digital and kind of where things are and, and the, the demands that they, that they have now, which change. Right, I mean, I think everybody has sort of said, okay, we have to make the move to digital. It's a lot easier, funny enough, in the developing world to do that because they don't have to rip out millions of dollars of cable that isn't up to snuff anymore. Um, you know, it's we, interesting what Google is doing in Kansas City, but that's just that's just sort of a sandbox for them. It's we're also looking at what new technologies are out there. So cable may not be the answer for the future. It may be what we've been calling son of WiMAX. What's 5G or 6G look like and will we be able to deliver video signals that way rather than via a, a hardwired cable? Just getting back to social for a moment, if we could just kind of go into the social guide a little bit and then talk a little bit about Facebook and some of the best practices for customers if you can address that. Sure. Well, we see the main advantage of social is in the discovery phase. In other words, when I'm, what do I want to watch that night? So if I log on, if I open up my electronic program guide and I see that five of my friends are watching the Olympics, I'll probably say, hey, I'll turn it, tune into this too. That's just human nature. People aren't all that. It's, it's not that deep a decision. Some of the, the advantage to having a Facebook Connect on that is if I am watching Comcast and you're watching via, via Fios, I can still, if we're Facebook friends, I can still see what you're watching. So it opens up my graph and lets me see what my friends are watching rather than just my friends who are also watching via the same provider. With Facebook and Twitter, Twitter in particular, the challenge is to get people to use a hashtag. Too often with the apps that are out there now, if you look at what the Twitter feed is, say, for the office, what you're seeing is what happened at work that day, not necessarily anything about the TV show. Because the people are using the hashtag, or they're not using the hashtag at all. So those are two things. But to go back, I think the main thing we're going to see social for is discovery. What are my friends watching? What have they liked? And that's going to help inform my decision in the moment 
rather than any heavily researched or wanting to go in because a lot of my friends are talking about it.